The Honourable Governor of NCDC, thank you for hosting this evening. Uh, Honourable Ministers, Mayors, Seniors, Officials, Colleagues, Distinguished Guests, particularly those of you within the room that are Kiwis. Um, it's nice to be amongst some of you. Can I also acknowledge um, the Honourable Her Excellency um, Taima Onario, the Vice President of Karabais and Senior CLGF Board Member for the Pacific, who, although she could not be with us, is a major influencer in this region and a major friend of the board of CLGF. It is moreover particularly pleasing to see the presence after, an ab after some absence, absence here with us uh, for our colleagues from Fiji. We hope that the forthcoming elections in Fiji will be successful and look forward to working with our colleagues, not least in what we hope will lead to subsequent local government elections and the restoration of local democracy in that country. In addition, I welcome the representatives of all countries, including our friends from the non-Commonwealth countries, such as the Marshall Islands. I hope that all of you who are not already formal members of CLGF Pacific will be sufficiently convinced by the end of the week to join our growing local government family. Allow me to start, however, by expressing my warm appreciation to the people and the government of PNG, to NCDC and all your staff for helping host this high-level Pacific Local Government Forum and for this kind reception and your wonderful hospitality. I bring you warm greetings from my country, New Zealand, which, like Australia, is very much part of the Pacific community as well as from our many Commonwealth colleagues from around the world, from Britain, Europe, Africa, where we have held 2013 CLGF conference, from Asia and from Americas, where in the Caribbean there are many small states as there are in the Pacific. Since the last forum held in Honiara in 2012, CLGF Pacific and indeed CLGF worldwide has made important progress including in such key areas as supporting women in local government. Here in the Pacific, the new phase of our regional program has started to deliver important results in 2013, focusing on the following six core areas of work. Firstly, by promoting advocacy by the establishment of a regional Pilgan network of local government associations and a national level in the Cook Islands together with the National Women and Local Government Networks in Bougainville and Solomon Islands. To supporting local government structures and systems, for example, helping the review of legislation in Kiribati, Vanuatu, and the development of village bylaws in Samoa. By supporting community and voter awareness programs in Samoa and Tonga. And local government institutional strengthening, strengthening through training and assistance with the development of strategic plans, notably in Vanuatu, Cook Islands and Samoa. By technical assistance with the management of urbanisation of Kiribati, Marshall Islands, Vanuatu and through the Pacific Capital Cities Forum Network. By sharing, knowledge sharing and research, also from other small states elsewhere in the Commonwealth through the wider CLGF network and by programme governance and management of CLGF Pacific, including monitoring environment designation of Her Excellency Taima Onario as the lead board member as it moves for to formally register the regional structure. I am pleased to note that under our results-based work, in 2013, 35 designated activities have been completed and another 33 are in progress and 72% of output indicators have been addressed, with 13 out of the 18 targets achieved. Of course, strengthening local government and ministry capacity to build local communities, provide minimum standards of service delivery and improve its delivery support. Developmental efforts and ensure good governance is not a short-term task. It takes perseverance and it takes commitment. I am therefore happy that one of the particular achievements of the work of CLGF Pacific to date has been to help to consolidate and indeed establish what we hope will be sustainable, a sustainable structure to deal with these tasks, especially national associations of local government 
and a regional network of those associations. In this context, it is worth recalling that local government, by its very institutional nature, provides sustainability for the delivery of essential services and the building of resilient communities. It is, it is local government, after all, which normally assumes the responsibility for the continuation and maintaining of many donor or NGO funded projects once the latter has been set up. Of course, with much support is provided by our own membership. Often in kind, the allocation of senior staff, provision of venues and other technical backup, as is the case of this forum. And I want to thank and acknowledge all the people and organisations that have been part in making that happen. This in-kind support and know-how also from the academic sector, sector, which has had its own research forum in Port Moresby, is, a highly, valuable, is highly valuable and provides ex expertise which, if it had to be purchased from the private sector, would be extremely expensive. As a result, of our, work, as a result our work can be seen as being very cost-effective and provides value for money for those developmental partners investing in it. I am therefore gratified that the New Zealand Government has continued to provide key resources for this work and, and, and appreciative for the additional resources which have been attracted from Australia, the UN, the EU and other partners. We hope that this support will continue to grow in the future in line with ongoing demands and look in particular to our Australian colleagues to match the support being provided by New Zealand. And I would just wish to pause there, even though I'm from New Zealand, I wish to acknowledge what was just said and the longer term contractual relationships that are being co considered. This game is a long term game and these things are very important to us. Let me now return to the wider work of CLGF which is directly relevant to our members of the Pacific. At the 2013 CLGF conference in Uganda we agreed the Kampala Declaration on Developmental Local Government which um, which assists the local, which assets that local government has a broad development role, working in partnership with national and provincial governments, the private sector and civil society, in taking forward developmental goals, not merely delivering services. We also called for 2014 to be declared and to be celebrated as the year of developmental local government, and many of our members worldwide are currently engaged in this task. This developmental role of local government was in fact recognised was in fact recognised at the 2012 CLGF Pacific Forum in Honiara, which following the earlier CLGF Cardiff consensus on local government develop, development, highlighted what in terms what is termed unleashing the potential of local government as a catalyst for local economic development and delivering the MDGs, the Millennium Development Goals. I am pleased that the role of, in particular, cities as engines of economic growth and the wider challenges arising out of rapid urbanisation were recognised in the recent high-level UN report, which was co-chaired by the leaders of UK, Indonesia and Liberia. In Uganda, CLGF working with UNDP, and in particular the UNDP Administrator, the Right Honourable Helen Clark, who was also a CLGF pa patron, it adopted, in addition to the Mionyo statement on local government's role in the post-2015 developmental agenda, development agenda. The post-2015 development agenda is what will replace the MDGs, which were agreed back in 2000, and, it, and is likely to involve new global sustainable development goals. SDGs, sustainable development goals, in such areas as economic growth, climate change and governance in addition to those already covered under the previous MDGs. I am currently representing CLGF on the Global Task Force on Post-2015 and Habitat 3, together with UCLG, UNDP and any, many other like-minded partners. I am pleased to report that CLGF, working with its partners, has made significant progress in getting international support at the UN and elsewhere for one of the key recommendations of the CLGF Mionyo statement, namely that local government should have a key role in setting, implementing and monitoring the new SDGs at the local level, working of course closely with ministries of local government and other government departments. There is also progress in getting agreement on recognising the special roles of cities 
and the urbanisation process, possibly by having a special SDG developed to urban development targets. It was particularly pleasing that the CLGF delegation which I led in November 2013 of Commonwealth leaders was able to secure formal endorsement of both the CLGF Kampala Declaration and the Mionyo Statement, as well as the designation of 2014 as the Year of, lo of Developmental Local Government. This of course means that all our Commonwealth Pacific nations and their governments are pledged to support the objectives set out in their CLGF policy statements on developmental local government and post-2015, and we look forward to achieve support at the UN and elsewhere. In this context, I wish to acknowledge the valuable support CLGF has received from in particular the Government of PNG in its current efforts to seek the strengthening CLGF's own status within the Commonwealth. We are, we are indeed delighted also to have the, the Prime Minister of Tuvalu with us as a patron, which is also significant in our work. We hope that by this time, when our leaders share their next meeting in Malta in 2015, we'll, we'll have made further progress in, the, in this direction. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, let me recall that the majority of our Commonwealth members, not only in the Pacific but also elsewhere, are small states, especially small island states. Over the past two years, CLGF has actively been engaged in the work in support of small states and has attended important ministerial meetings, most recently in Colombo and St Lucia. I was particularly happy that the Deputy Director of CLGF's Pacific Office was able to attend a St Lucia meeting and interact with colleagues there. Likewise, I hope that CLGF will have a significant presence at the SIDS conference in Samoa in September. Let me conclude by paying tribute to the serious and dedicated work being done by all of um, our people at CLGF and the program in the Pacific, including, of, the, of course, the TAP and its chair, uh, Ms Cheryl Alla, our own and famous director, Karabais, who didn't want me to acknowledge her like that, and her hard-working working team. I live in New Zealand. Um, I know that Karabais and her team do a wonderful job in the Pacific, and I want to thank and acknowledge the five of you, particularly, for what you do. It's outstanding. <clears throat> all of that dedication and the work and effort and the partnerships by all the people that are recognised and who are here tonight is what makes this work. When I got into this role, I had no idea or understanding of many of the island state issues, the scale of the economies and the wonderful people that are in this sector. I thank you for coming uh, to this conference, uh, to this meeting. I thank the significant um, dignitaries that are with us, and I wish you every success for your work in local government in the future and every success here in Port Moresby. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I just have um, a, a gift for the... Um, for the the leader, the commissioner of, of no no, the, the the official disc of the prime ministers are being done tomorrow, but but on behalf um, and thank you for the national council, capital district commission, uh, <laughs> and you as the leader for hosting this evening, um, allowing us to share some of your hospitality and for your speech. Thank you very much.